So I'll start introducing, well, myself, uh, part of the documentation group. Uh, I'm Francesco. I'm a functional analyst for uh, OOPS 404. Uh, we are a company from central Italy. And I think one year ago we started to go full OCA as much as possible for all our development. Julie, she introduced herself. Yeah, I will introduce myself one more time. My name is Julie Lebrun. I, uh, I am also a functional consultant with Mimiji Solutions in Canada. Um, I have like more than five years experience. And we, uh, with Mimiji, we also work a lot with the um, OC module for all the needs, uh, our custom, customer needs. And in the group, we had another person, Laha, who is sitting there. She's a little bit shy, so she will stay there. <laughs> but she was part of the group, <laughs> and she worked a lot with us, too. Okay. Good. So, the first part about how did it started, it was uh, in the previous presentation. Uh, I think you were all here, but who, for those who are following online, uh, this is part of the, of the wider uh, functional uh, OCA group. And this was one of the focus groups, um, one of the topics we, we, we worked on. Documentation of OCA modules has been identified as one of the main areas where functional expertise can be useful. This is because functional functionals are, um, is the figure uh, who have to translate the customer request into a software solution. So our first um, objective, our first goal is to find a solution that is already made. So what do we do? We go on the OCA uh, app store or directly on GitHub if you know the structure of the, of the repos on, uh, on OCA and you start looking for a module that does what your customer has requested. If you are, if you have technical skills to read the code. Maybe you can skip straight to the code, just give a quick look at the documentation and say, okay, this model does this in that model, and then this other thing in this view, so I think it works this way. If you don't have a technical skill, then you are stuck with the documentation. You need to read why uh, this model was made, wh what is the goal, how to use it, and then all the subsections of the, of the README module, which is where we keep documentation for modules on OCA. So the main goals um, for the documentation project we have uh, first is to make it easier for everyone to understand what is the purpose of the module and how to use it to provide, to um, make functionals uh, able to decide quickly to analyze, is this module good for what I need? So, and we, we noticed that can, there is room for improvement in how we do this uh, in OCA. To provide guidelines on how to write good and complete documentation, this is because they, they were not existing in the OCA general guidelines. Uh, on, okay, you're, you have developed your module, now how do you write documentation? So we felt that uh, we had a need to put it down, how, how to make documentation that is good for everyone and also align the style. Third point, uh, improve access to editing and contribution of module documentation for functional people. For example, by adding screenshots. Uh, the point here is that once you find a module which has documentation that can be improved, um, it's quite a waste to ask for developer time to go and change the documentation itself when it's something that we can do it easily, uh, at least on the writing down the, the, the text. But then we need to find a way to get it in GitHub and in the, in the flow of making a PR, asking to change the documentation, get it merged. So um, adding screenshots, it's, it's something on the, on the well, also user, user experience for us. Like, just have it very clear 
what to do with this model. Here are a couple examples of what you can find from time to time when browsing modules on the OCA. Uh, for example, images that are, that are linked in documentation. Sometime here, I think the, the name of the files have been changed, so the images are lost. And, or sometimes you find documentation that looks really from a few centuries ago. Right? <laughs> that big uh, purple trimion robot that is, I don't know, version 10, 8. Well, from a long time ago. So we want to make functionals able to fix this quickly by themselves. And I'll pass it to Julie. Okay, so what did we do last year? What are the changes? Um, the first uh, step was to uh, change the format of the readme's because, because the readme are, were, were in RST and as Fran Francesco said, adding screenshots into an RST file was very complicated. That's why there's not a lot of screenshots in any uh, Oduma, uh, OCA modules. So um, we, we did a lot of work, uh, search for a better format, and we found that Markdown was um, supported by GitHub. So we could change the RST files into Markdown, and with the Markdown format, you can just drag and drop your image. So it's really easy to um, to put the, the screenshot into uh, the documentation. That was the main point, uh, because screenshots are like essential to a great documentation. So if you don't have any screenshots, yes, you can have like the steps, but if I have one step, one screenshot, one step, one screenshot, screenshot it's easier to understand. Um, so that was made. Um, the other change was to provide uh, guidelines for documentation. We started to work on this, but it's not finished yet. Like we said in the previous um, talk, we will put it into the OCA website under, um, there's a section on the OCA website, I don't remember. It's not documentation, but it's, um, I, I don't remember, but we will, we will communicate about that, and we will put the guidelines there. Uh, and we wanted to enhance the readme template. So we did it. Um, we found that there was a missing piece in the readme structure. And on the OCA readme, uh, you don't have the context or the why the module was made at the beginning. We were talking about this in the previous talk. Uh, yes, you have this module and it does that. But what was the need before that? Why was it uh, developed in the first time? So uh, we added a new fragment, because if you don't already know, the readme's um, in the OCA are like a group of fragments or different documents. So you have the, the, the section usage, um, configuration, contributors, uh, Etc. So we added a new one that's context use case. So now it's available on the README template on the OCA on GitHub. So we you can use it now and start to write this section. Um, so this is great changes, but what are the impacts of those changes? Um, well, the first impact was that um, we needed to convert the README template into Markdown. So it, it has been done. Um, we will be converting in the next weeks. Uh, all we need, uh, next weeks, it was like some weeks ago, but we will, uh, <laughs> we will uh, continue to work on it. Um, I think it's Stefan. Stefan from the board, it will uh, work on converting uh, all readme files uh, on all repositories to markdown files. 
Uh, for the branch 16, we decided to do it only for the branch 16 to start with. And uh, when the, the branch 17 will be put in place, it will be already in markdown. So um, we will, like for the branch 16, we will accept RST in markdown. I say we, but like it will be accepted, uh, like we will have a temporary uh, adjustment period. So you could find RSD or markdown files for the readme uh, in the 16 branch, but for the 17, it will be only on in markdown. So the roadmap. Um, like I, like uh, we said, we work on implementing the markdown file. Uh, we started the guidelines, but we haven't finished, so it's going to be part of the roadmap to continue uh, to write uh, the guidelines. So it will be not only uh, how to do it in GitHub, but how to write a good documentation for modules. Um, we want to. to I did um, identify existing good, good module documentation because there, yes, we talk about bad documentation, but there's good documentation existing right now. So we want to uh, identify those so you can use it as an example. And we want to improve module documentation in V16. And um, it will be good to, in the next year, to follow the progress of the contributions and reviewing uh, like the process if it's needed. So we want you to be able to, to start contributing to the modules documentation. So we will follow the contributions and see what can be uh, adjusted if we need to change some things. Questions? Doubts? Comments? Yes? Do you have any videos explaining how our modules work? Uh, partly also from the OCI and base and so on. And um, I think it's good to connect videos to the module so we can show through a video or through a PowerPoint presentation or something. Like a screenshot will make the change very, very long. But if you can put together all the screenshots, Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. You know, Markdown was a choice not only for the drag and drop option for the images, but also because it's easier to work with. And so you can insert any kind of document. It can be screenshots, but it can be a video link. So, yes? Yeah, I think it's, sorry, uh, just, to, yeah, just to give a feedback. Uh, I think it would be really good to collect also feedbacks from this room about what is for you good documentation. Because what, what you say really makes sense. Uh, it could be good to also offer a video opportunity if there is one already made. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I also maybe personally think that I really like the, to have clear text that I, that I can read and I don't need to scroll through a video. Uh, or maybe, for example, I know Julie uh, really prefers the, the image, the screenshot, so we need to find a good balance on how to offer all the different ways to understand how to use a model uh, without making it too long or, or uh, yeah, without having it, how do you say, uh, without crossing paths with, the, with these different methods of Yes. Describing a model. And uh, another option is the middle of the boat. So you can use GIF. GIF, it's not a big video. It's not an image. But sometimes a GIF, when you, you need, you don't want to take too much steps, like to have a longer, you can put, like, put some steps into one GIF. So that's one way to do it too. Yes? So I have like two questions. The first one is talk about the timeframe. So do you 
Uh, in the OCA, uh, when a developer wants to propose a module, they have to use a template that's already here, like for several years it's been available. So um, the, the only thing we did was adding one more section that was not there, the context use case. Yeah. So um, it's there, but a lot of functionals, they don't know it exists. So in the guidelines, we want to also show you how you can access the template and how you can uh, use it. Okay, that was the second question because now if those sections, so that section, the context has been like asked, the point is, is it going to be for the grant 16 and the forthcoming grant, so the next one, 617 and others, that those sections, are they going to be like mandatory to make sure that when you are doing the communication, you have to those or is it going to be I don't I don't remember if it's been that mandatory. So I don't think there is anything mandatory so far. Uh, yesterday I I noticed with my developers we merged our model without documentation. I say okay, let's go back there and put those files there. Um, but uh, sure, I think I think this can also improve if we have more functionals reviewing the, the, the PRs themselves, because uh, you see sometimes developers are really into the code, so these files are always, they, they see it as an extra, so sometimes it's also easy to forget them when, uh, when merging a new, a new module. Uh, for now, we didn't set standards on, on we, what kind of content and which Fragments of the readme should be mandatorily in a in a module, but that could be a good idea for the future. And uh, if I can finish with this, um, it's you know putting ourselves functional, uh, doing this work. We we didn't want to like tell the developers how to do their job. So those changes are sometimes difficult to 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 make because we don't want to insult anybody or so we wanted to go soft we, like we started soft <laughs> with like we proposed to adding a new fragment but there's nothing mandatory for the moment because we didn't want to change like everything from the first uh, step yes uh, sir. I think we will need some, um, uh, how do you say, technical help on this. <laughs> but why not? I mean, uh, anything that makes the, the documentation more full of information, I think that's, that's our goal. So ideas are welcome and uh, I'm sure that we, we always know that when we also get to talk with, with the technical people, they can also provide insights like that. I think we skipped yes. the question. Yes, sorry. Uh, I don't know Markdown, but the question is that as functional, uh, even though we see Markdown, we still need the PR to change the documentation and then the yes. review and the maintainer review. Okay. Yes, that, that was one point we decided to put like further into the process because, like I said, we, we didn't want to change like all the way it was done. So we did a little bit of changes for start, but that was one point, like how can we make it easier to access for functional uh, without all the big process of PR and, uh, and adding, like merging the PR and everything, yeah. Maybe, I don't, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but maybe we can, in a way, say that this PR is only for documentation to help technical reviewers and maintainers to upgrade faster because sometimes in OCI 
I see a lot of fear that, that are like there. I don't know. They never get there. Yeah, we know about this and we talk about this problem. We, we all face it. Um, and like I said, we decided to wait for the second step. So we forgot to put it into the roadmap, but it's in the roadmap to make it easier. So because we have to, t to talk with the, the developers on the OCA so they can, they can think about a way to make it easier because now it would be like a very big change to change this process. Yes. Um. Yeah, uh, this is something that we also discussed about at the beginning. Uh, once you improve the documentation, how do we... Um, Identify? Yeah, put kind of a mark there and say, okay, uh, something uh, that, that could be parallel to the uh, module, um, how do you say, the stable uh, level, what is that? The, the develop the maturity level. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We should. Have, I think one idea could be to have something similar for the for the documentation level, like to improve basic complete <laughs> and and, and, and so on. But I think this will come once we start contributing on uh, on making PRs to improve the documentation. And, and for sure, we will need reviews also for these for these PRs. So uh, someone will uh, will um, will prepare an improvement to the documentation, and then we will need some someone to check whether the, the documentation that does it respond to reality, what's what's written here. So someone to functionally test also the the, the, the module, and then uh, and then uh, say, okay, yeah, this is good documentation. It responds to what the model does. And uh, I think it goes in that direction. Yeah, and the problem with this is we need someone to review it and give it like the, the status. So this is poor, this is great, this is complete. So there's a lot of work. So we, we, don't, we discuss about it and we don't have any idea. So all your ideas are good. We could talk about it, you know, uh, Virginie, she invites us. Uh, she invited you to um, to the lunch tomorrow, so we can discuss um, the work we have done and what we want to do. If you want to contribute, if you have any ideas for us, other questions, doubts, comments? Yes. We, we evaluated this option uh, because there's a wiki on the repos on GitHub. So we, we, ta we talked about putting the documentation into the wiki instead of the readme. But uh, the problem with that was like to have information in two places. Uh, and with the um, OCA developers, we, we liked the idea of using the, our, the existing readme instead, so everything stays in the same place. Because in the readme, you have also link to the run, run both, uh, to the uh, OCA, to translate the, the web. So to, have, to, to split it into two places into GitHub was not 
consider like the best idea. So that's why we rejected. Yes? Yeah, can you repeat, sorry? <laughs> <laughs> Based on the last question, exactly on what you're saying, you know, we talk about systems really and systems, like the evaluation of the documentation and the standard of that. So my question is, did, uh, did you already like um, uh, figure out or find out like the, the structure of when you to propose like a standard, for sure it's not going to be mandatory. As you say, we are not going to push that far at the beginning, it's going to be step by step. Then to make sure that we can have stitches like go to review, complete, it means that we have to base that as analyze on the standard. Exactly. So structure, you already define that this is going to be the best practice. So did you already like put something in place like that, like this is the best practice in terms of documentation, this is how we are going to do it, and uh, look guys, if we can do on that way for sure from brain system and the forthcoming one, that's going to be the documentation. Um, yes, in the guidelines we have prepared, uh, we have worked on this part on proposing like what should be the structure of the RIMI, uh, like best practices. So yes, it will be included into the guidelines. Yeah. Other comments? Questions? Okay then. Thank you everybody. Yeah.